Very special thanks to Affordable Prestige Cars in Glastonbury. As always, I've linked to their website down in the video description where you can check out their current stock. And speaking of that stock, as their name suggests, they've got a lot of upmarket vehicles for much more affordable prices, from Mercedes to Jaguar and even beyond. So if you are on the market for that kind of thing, check out their stock. It changes pretty regularly. And of course, you can find that down in the description. If you decided to click on this review at all, I want to commend you for having an open mind, because when it comes to this car, a lot of people don't. In fact, it's not quite as bad as the Toyota Prius in terms of being the butt of jokes, but it's not far off, because it tends to be a very misunderstood vehicle. And of course, I'm talking about the Mercedes R-Class. Now, for this review, just to set the stage for the rest of the video, I'm going to do something a little different to what I would typically do. Usually with my reviews, I hone in on one specific model or trim level. And even though, of course, I was driving a specific model in this video, this is more of an overarching review of the R-Class. And I'm going to hone in on three in particular. The R320, the R500, and briefly, the R63 AMG. Because, as the saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And even though this car definitely is not trash, the sentiment definitely applies. And that is exactly why I believe that this car is a hidden gem. See, what Mercedes wanted to do was relatively simple, albeit kind of misguided, and that is they wanted an alternative for executives who wanted typically an SUV or a limo, you know, get in at the airport, waft across the country to a meeting in total luxury, comfort, and near silence with plenty of space for seven full-sized adults. Of course, you can't have seven seats in a typical Mercedes S-Class or an E-Class, and yet this still has even more loading space, better fuel economy, and more headroom and legroom than an SUV typically would. It's an interesting idea, and there are certainly a lot of perks within there. But as the sales kind of showed, it wasn't exactly the best idea Mercedes ever had. Or was it? Because this is my point of contention, and the crux of why I wanted to review this car in the first place. See, what Mercedes did was, from a marketing point of view, kind of a failure. But from a used car point of view, it's a genius move, albeit an unintentional one. Because Mercedes made essentially a minivan with fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 worth of engineering, luxury, comfort, and equipment, which absolutely tanked in used values. That sounds like a bad thing. Here's why it isn't. Because nowadays, here in the UK, doubtless in the States, where there are a number of our classes as well, and probably even mainland Europe, well, you can find these for like five or six grand. And that's a similar amount of money to what you'd expect from something like a typical minivan with a full plastic interior, front wheel drive, and let's just say, not Mercedes level quality engineering and certainly status. Now there are two things about the R-Class which may concern you if you are a prospective buyer. One is the fuel economy and the main one tends to be, well what if it breaks? It's a Mercedes, so surely if it is unreliable, which it very well could be, it's going to cost a lot to repair, surely. Well, I did a bit of research on that, and as it turns out, most of those unreliability jokes tend to be relatively unfounded, if not completely unfounded, because according to owner's reviews, it has a 4.4 out of 5 across thousands of owner's responses. Even on the Mercedes-Benz owner's forums, people tend to give the car more respect than the average Joe does, including, again, previous owners. Plus, as somebody who myself owns a very prestige level vehicle when it comes to repairs, the Touareg V10 from Volkswagen, I can tell you that if you're willing to source some parts yourself, you can save massive amounts of money on any repair compared to what a franchise dealer or a specialist would want. And I can categorically tell you, it does not lower the quality of the work that you have done as long as you just get a good garage. Now, of course, that's not always going to be the case, but for example, Volkswagen wanted £1,500 to service my Touareg to the level that I wanted. I sourced the parts myself, had it done by a reputable local garage for 500 So my verdict on that is, don't be put off by horror stories. Most of them seem to be coming from people who have never even driven the car, let alone owned one. As usual, the least informed voices tend to be the loudest. Now, 
This particular car that I was driving is one of the three that I want to touch on, and that is, as I said, the R320. Now, what's the spec of this car? What do you actually get? Because typically this is the easiest one to find on the market, certainly here in the UK, about five or six grand. So what do you actually get? Well, the engine in this particular model is a 3.0-litre V6 diesel with 220 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. It has all-wheel drive, a 7-speed column shift automatic, and I can categorically say it's one of the most comfortable cars I've ever driven, and one of the most spacious too. And it also just so happens to be one of the quietest cars I've ever been in, actually borderline electric most of the time in terms of the silence. Most of the noise is from the road, from the tires, and from the aircon if you choose to have it turned on. So my first impressions even were very positive. It felt exactly as good as I was hoping a Mercedes of its caliber would. And again, this is not some top spec AMG, this is just the R320. In terms of fuel economy, well that tends to be the only significant difference you'll see between this and for instance a Renault Espace or a Fiat Multipler, because this one does top out around 38 to the gallon on the highway. And of course that's UK gallons, so you'll need to do a conversion for the states. Now then, let's talk about performance. It doesn't matter that much, but it's cool to know anyway, because this, I think, is another crucial thing that makes the R-Class a cool option for those who want a minivan. The 0-60 to on this one is 8.7 seconds. That doesn't sound that great, but to put that into perspective, the top-spec Renault Espace has a 3.5-litre V6 engine, about 240 horsepower, and crucially, weighs about 400 kilos less than this Mercedes. It's even bigger physically, still only has seven seats, and the performance is barely half a second better. So in other words, that Renault, which is the top of the Espace tree, is barely better than this, which is the lower end of the R-Class tree. So to stick on the topic of performance for just a second, where can we go from here? Well, that's the great thing. The only way is up, because the R500, which is basically the fastest one you'll typically find on the market, is a beast of a minivan. It's got a 5-litre V8 engine, 300 horsepower, 340 pound-feet of torque, of course being a petrol rather than a diesel, retains the 7-speed gearbox, keeps all-wheel drive as well. 0-60 to on that one is 6.9 seconds. That's as fast as my Touareg V10, which is lightly modified. Again, this is a minivan we're talking about. That's not bad at all. Top speed is over 150 miles an hour, and of course on that one being a petrol and a, a more high performance variant, you're gonna drop a little bit of fuel economy, prices are a little bit higher, typically the mileage maybe as well, but again, it's an option there if you want it. That is one hell of a minivan. And let's not just gloss over the fact that that R500 is already faster than every other minivan on the market, including what most people would think of as being the fastest, the Vauxhall Zafira VXR. We're already quicker than that, and we're not even at the top of the tree yet, because of course you can't talk about an R-Class without briefly touching on the most nuts version of all, probably the most bonkers AMG ever built, the R63. Now, I wish I were reviewing that car, but they only built 200, so it's not exactly easy to find. The prices were about 75, 80,000 pounds, quite a lot for a minivan, <laughs> and even the used prices are very high as well, so good luck finding one. But my point isn't so much about buying the AMG, it's actually about the performance. Because how many minivans can genuinely claim to be the fastest people carrier ever produced? The answer to that question is one, because it's that car. The R63 is the fastest production minivan ever built. 6.2 litre V8, 500 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. It still weighs 300 kilos less than my Touareg, and it can hit 60 miles an hour in five seconds. A five second 0 to 60, seven seater minivan. Now, of course, most of this review is not about the R63 AMG, or necessarily even the R500, because for most people, those aren't going to be the options that you go for. But it is nice to know that you could literally be driving around, essentially, the base model of what formed the fastest minivan of all time. In fact, I would say it's pretty impressive when literally the only way up from this 
is to reference the Renault Espace F1. And that is not a production car, you can't buy it, and it's not road legal. And it just so happens to have a Formula One engine. That is literally the only minivan built by a factory that's quicker than this Mercedes R-Class. But even when it comes to these lower spec models, the R500 is a great performance car. That big V8 engine, I have no doubt, sounds fantastic. And one of the things that surprised me about this one, the three liter diesel with a healthy 220 horses, is that it's a lot quicker than you'd expect it to feel. And surprisingly to me, it actually sounds a lot nicer than I expected it to as well, because one of my only gripes with high performance diesels is that they actually don't sound that great, typically. This one sounds pretty nice. At lower speeds, when you put your foot down, it's got a nice little rumble to it. But as I said earlier on, the rest of the time, it's a borderline silent car. The suspension feels fantastic. The gearbox is smooth. I personally love column shift gearboxes. And although, of course, in the States, that's fairly common, here in the UK, you hardly ever see that, really. I love the fact that Mercedes is using that because it just gets so much of that unnecessary gearage out of the center console to allow you to have, in the case of this car, as you can see, even more storage space. As you can see also at the start of the video, you open the trunk and put the seats down. This thing basically is a full-size van. But the genius thing about the design that Mercedes went with is that even though it is legitimately a massive seven-seater from the inside, it's almost like a TARDIS, because from the outside, it's actually not that big of a car. It's physically no larger than my Touareg. In fact, I think it's probably smaller. And although it's a very tall car, it's not that high off the ground. So getting in and out of it for adults and kids alike is very easy. The headroom is endless. The legroom is like nothing I've experienced. You can almost cross your legs on the driver's seat. And even stuff like the ergonomics of how the interior is designed, the fact that you've got wood, real leather, not the plasticky alternatives from Vauxhall, Renault, Citroen, whoever, it's a proper Mercedes. So in closing, my opinion of the R-Class is actually that apart from one thing, which is that it doesn't quite match the fuel economy of some other options. You know, there are some minivans that can do 40, 50, 60 miles per gallon. Apart from that one difference, and even this one can do 38 on the highway, it feels at least as good as any other minivan that I've ever been in. In fact, I would say it's heads above the rest of them. And the reason why is clear. It's designed to be. This wasn't ever intended to be what it ended up being, an affordable minivan. It's not supposed to be an affordable minivan. It was intended to be, as I said, a luxury executive one. And that is great for us as the consumer because you get so much car for such a relatively modest price. So it may not be the obvious choice, but that's kind of why I like it. If you're willing to take the plunge on something that's a little bit oddball, well, if you can, try to arrange a test drive. Because if you do, I think you might just fall in love with it. It certainly feels heads above any other minivan I've ever been in. And yeah, if I was in the market for a minivan, personally, I have no question. It would be this one. So if you are an existing R-Class owner, if you're thinking about buying one, if you have some concerns, or maybe even if you have a horror story, put it down in the comments because it could well benefit somebody else who's thinking about one. And of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out my other reviews. And if you wanna check out my future reviews, then of course, not only hit subscribe, but slap the notification bell as well. Because without that, you won't see my new videos. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.